Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we will consider what makes a leather jacket a classic piece of menswear and give you multiple ways to style it. Now, contrary to what some people assume, the leather jacket has a place in the classic menswear canon, but you have to pick the style and material that's right for you. Because a quality leather jacket can be a substantial investment, we're making this guide to help you make the right choice. We'll provide insight on how to get the most out of your leather jacket by showing off some looks that really anyone can pull off. Leather jackets might be associated with stylish bad boys, but their origins are actually classically utilitarian. In the late 19th and 20th centuries, leather jackets were essentially practical garments. Motorcycle jackets actually began as safety equipment as they would protect the rider from road rash in the event of crashes and provide insulation and warmth while riding. Leather jackets were also favored by early motorists as they drove through the countryside at the ludicrous speed of 15 miles an hour. These garments would protect their clothes and kept them looking good. Side note, if you like Fort Belvedere's driving gloves, let me know down in the comments if we should make those wacky driving goggles also. Aviators wore them for vital insulation at a time when airplanes either had open cockpits or lacked climate control. In fact, the famous bomber jacket got its start on the crew decks of bomber planes. For this reason, prior to World War II, leather jackets were rarely worn in social settings, but that changed after the war. Leather jackets became a popular garment among young men, and they were seen as distinctly casual. Now, while some modern men wear a leather jacket to formal events, you really wanna keep this jacket as a casual style, which is why it's featured so prominently in our overall rundown of casual jackets. Leather jackets as a whole have had a considerable impact on our popular culture. On the one hand, young men who grew up in the 1940s and after associated the leather jacket with the brave airmen who fought in the skies of World War II. And conversely, leather jackets were seen as sort of a sign of teenage rebellion in the 50s, especially motorcycle jackets worn by Marlon Brando. And in real life, off the silver screen, young people copied Brando's wardrobe and made the Shot Perfecto a household name. But did you know that some people actually don't believe that Brando wore the Shot Perfecto in the wild one? For more on that, check out our guide and the Is It Worth It on the Shot Perfecto here. Nowadays, leather jackets remain associated with dynamic and stylish men, such as Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Ryan Reynolds, and Donald Glover. Or the roles they play on film, like The Place Beyond the Pines, starring Ryan Gosling, or Daniel Craig in Casino Royale, with other prominent appearances like Ralph Fiennes' flight jacket in The King's Men, Brad Pitt's iconic red leather jacket in Fight Club, and Tom Hardy's famous Bane jacket in The Dark Knight Rises. Hmm, you know, I think I've seen Bane's jacket before. These pants are expensive and came with this flying jacket that I stole from Launchpad McQuack. So it's clear that Hollywood has found a lot to love about leather jackets, and so can you. So what makes a leather jacket so appealing? Well, usually it's the combination of styles, features, and quality that can be mixed and matched to your preferences. So as we've just shown with the pictures of those celebrities, it can seem difficult to pick out the right leather jacket, but we've narrowed it down for you. First, you can separate most of the wheat from the chaff by focusing on good leather quality. This tends to remove a considerable amount of novelty, ugly, no, <laughs> poorly made novelty, okay. <laughs> I mean, they are but all right. Now, this will remove quite a bit of poor quality or novelty jackets from your choices. And if you need help identifying quality, feel free to pursue a lot of our videos we've done on the Gentleman's Gazette about good leather quality. Especially check out our Is It Worth It videos on the Shot Perfecto and the Bell Staff Trial Master. Quality leather jackets will be considerably more expensive, but if you buy the right one, it'll give you a great cost per wear return. Color is another initial consideration to keep you grounded. For a classic leather jacket, you really wanna start off with black and shades of brown and tan. Blue, red, and green can be interesting expansion colors, and white, orange, and other colors can be really interesting, but you're really getting outside of the realm of classic men's style. So safe to say, save the white leather jacket like switches from the Matrix for another day. In review, how do you select a classically inspired leather jacket collection? Not like this. Not like this.
Because leather jackets began as practical garments, different styles will have different features dependent upon their intended use. And while we don't have time to cover all the features of, of different leather jackets, it's probably best to pick out features that have to do with you and your personal circumstances. Do you live in a colder climate? Then consider a naturally insulating lining like wool or fur or shearling to keep your body warm. But if you live in a warmer climate, I would opt to not do the shearling just to live out your fantasies of flying a B-52. You won't feel or look very cool if you're all sweaty with all that superfluous insulation. But if you prefer more functional jackets, make sure to pick a pocket configuration that fits your needs. For instance, if you're left-handed, some of the pocket layouts on a motorcycle jacket favor a right-handed dominant person, so that might not work for you. Of course, hardware detailing can be a purely aesthetic choice, so go with what you like, but keep in mind, keep it minimal and it'll be classic. Most jacket features will be dictated by the jacket's overall style. In the classic style, there are really two types of jackets. First, the more vintage. This has a looser fit, more bulky cut, but it has a lot more hardware on it with styles like the Shot Perfecto and the Bellstaff Trial Master. And the more modern jacket, which has a tighter cut and sleeker appearance. To avoid looking dated, we recommend staying away from styles that are associated with certain eras. For instance, leather jackets that are cut like a blazer can be really reminiscent of styles from the 70s and 80s. While excessive quilting and detailing should really be left in the club scenes of the late 90s and early 2000s. Finally, it also needs to be said that we're not going to cover full length leather coats like a full leather trench coat or dusters. Here's Mac to explain the difference. Well, first of all, it's not a jacket. It's a duster. It's like a jacket, only it's longer, thicker, and far more bad. I look like Lorenzo Lamas and women find it irresistible. Well, that part's just simply not true. You might find advice online encouraging men of specific body types to avoid certain styles of jackets. For example, they might recommend that shorter men wear a more vintage jacket in order to look bigger. But in our opinion, that advice is really broad and not generally useful. What's more important is finding a jacket that fits really well for your body type. So check out this video for the best advice on how to dress to your body type and your own personal style. For many gentlemen, leather jackets represent the ideal of masculine suavity. So it's really important to feel cool and confident in whatever you pick. For instance, for me personally, I don't like leather jackets that have a whole lot of detail and stuff going on. The Bellstaff Trial Master and Shot Perfecto, while classic, have details like belts and hooks on them that personally don't do it for me. There's nothing intrinsic about my physique or my personal style. It's just something that I learned and discovered by trial and error with time. So don't be afraid to experiment with different styles of leather jackets to figure out which one works best for you. But to help you get started, here are some styling suggestions coming right up. Our first looks are good for everyday wear in most climates. So this first look is a very modern outfit that most guys can pull off. I'll start off with a brown leather jacket. These are both in suede. One of them is a moto jacket. The other one has these sort of pockets on the side. Both are really good because the suede keeps them nice and casual. With the rest of the outfit, we want to complement the minimal appearances of these jackets. So we'll add in light t-shirts, whether it's gray or white, maybe a Henley. Jeans are great, whether light blue or dark blue. And sneakers of your preference. I prefer a pair of minimal white trainers, whereas Chris might like Jordans or Air Force Ones. The lighter colors keep the outfit airy and casual, but the clean front of the shirt and the simplicity of the jeans don't jar with the minimalist jacket. And if desired, you can darken this color palette, maybe with a darker t-shirt, a dark polo, or a dark pair of boots in order to formalize the look. For another everyday look, albeit a more formal one, I'll style a brown leather Bellstaff Trial Master. With its attached belt, prominent patch pockets, and exposed stitching, this jacket is the opposite of the minimalist moto, so I'll take a different approach. Let's add in a light blue OCBD to create color visual interest if the jacket's worn open, or at the neck if the jacket is worn closed. Because the blue shirt contrasts with the brown of the jacket, let's pair a complimentary tan chino to keep the look tied together and finish it off with a pair of brown suede chukka boots and our Fort Belvedere shadow stripe socks. This look is a bit more formal and more unique in keeping with the bolder appearance of the trial master. For a more casual look, consider adding more color like olive trousers or a patterned shirt. Next, let's try out some cold weather looks. Uh, after all, we are working with jackets. So returning to the suede moto jacket, I'm going to emphasize a really soft silhouette without sacrificing warmth. Directly under the jacket, Chris is wearing a cotton cashmere hooded sweatshirt. The plush texture adds visual interest without being distracting, 
and the unexpected layering effect, especially when the jacket is open, make it look more memorable. And of course, the hooded sweatshirt will keep Chris warm with layers, which can be added and removed as needed. For warmth and style, Chris has on dark wash jeans, which set off the colors on the top half of the body nicely, and he finishes it off with a pair of boots. They illustrate the practical considerations of this outfit, but still look great. For this next look, I'm gonna tackle those days when it's really cold outside. You'll soon see why I'm opting for the Trial Master and all of its pocket space for holding accessories. I'll start off with a dark turtleneck under the Trial Master, which I'm closing three quarters of the way up. The turtleneck creates visual interest at the neck and helps trap my body heat. I've gone with a thinner turtleneck fabric to avoid appearing too bulky. This one's in cashmere. I also have to contend with the Minnesota winters, so let's add some redundant warmth with a quality scarf. It's always wise to invest in menswear articles that keep you warm, so I'm opting for a scarf from Fort Belvedere. Accessories are ideal for adding warmth, so I'll add another. A pair of denim blue Lamb Napa leather gloves, and Raphael goes into more detail about the utility of leather gloves in cold weather as part of our men's gloves definitive guide. If you've ever stood in the freezing cold and felt like your fingers were gonna fall off, then I don't really need to tell you anymore, you know what I mean. While walking or waiting for a ride, it's great to be able to use your phone with gloves, so I appreciate that Fort Belvedere offers a line of gloves that work with touchscreen. In this look, I opted to match the scarf and the gloves, and you can learn more about pairing gloves and scarves in this video here. To ground this look, I'll finish off with warm wool trousers and charcoal, and a pair of dark brown boots to tie the look together, and their more muted appearance will give a greater pop to the scarf and the gloves. Now, when warm weather comes, you don't have to put your leather jacket away right away. Here's a look to help you keep looking and feeling cool in your leather jacket. Because it's a bit bulkier, we need to be careful with leather jackets in the summer. So to that end, I'm starting off with a white PK polo shirt for maximum breathability. And I'll be sure to keep my leather jacket open to catch every breeze. You might be tempted to try on shorts to stay extra cool, but the bulk of a leather jacket will make you look top heavy. So instead, let's go with a light brown or tan pair of cotton trousers and finish it off with a fresh pair of white sneakers. These bright and neutral colors contrast with the richer brown of, of the leather jacket and help the entire outfit sparkle while staying light enough to beat the heat. Now, if I lived in a really hot and humid climate like Florida, I would be tempted to ditch the leather jacket right away. But here in Minnesota, where we have seasons of transition, I can keep wearing it and wear it in layers to help me go through the seasons. We hope that today's video provides you with a lot of inspiration on how to wear a leather jacket. And please let me know down in the comments below which one of the outfits you like best. Which one did you not like? What do you wanna wear? Uh, let me know down below. And finally, all these leather jackets and leather jackets talk uh, kind of has me wishing I owned a motorcycle. So maybe when we finish this video, Chris and I will go out on a Friday and we'll go look at some. Just don't tell my wife. In today's video, I'm wearing really an everyday casual outfit for me. It consists of a suede brown leather jacket, a gray sort of oatmeal colored t-shirt, dark jeans, and white sneakers. For accessories, I'm wearing my wedding ring, my Fort Belvedere gray two-tone socks, and of course, my trusty Omega Speedmaster.